Hello, and welcome back to another interview from White Album 2. Today we are on Dena Uehara, WA2 Songs Interview, and this is part two. So, continuing on, the second song, Sayonara no Koto, is the ending theme from the third episode onward. Which I think is interesting because after the third episode, that's when things start getting pretty emotionally intense, right? And they add in this song and you're like, ah, oh, you know, I think that's very fitting. And that was an interesting choice to have them do. This was a new song written by director Naoya Shimokawa, who was involved with the music for the game, right? He handled the music and the lyrics entirely himself, which was a first. I was surprised when I listened to it for the first time. Before it came through, I assumed it would be more of a ballad. As I listened, the verses sounded narrative and very emotional, but then they transitioned very lightly into the chorus with some added freshness. According to the director, he wanted to inject something youthful into the song, recalling a purer time. It's very different from all of the other White Album 2 songs up to this point. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of the White Album 2 songs are just so sad and make you cry. I mean, this one's sad to a point too. But the fact that Naoya Shimokawa wrote it, and he is the CEO of Aqua Plus, like he's in charge of everything, and he's like, yeah, I want to write this song. It's still just like, that's so crazy and cool to me. With the lyrics and melody, this is very much a winter song. Winter seems to be one of the main themes. The narrator in the lyrics uses boku, suggesting a male point of view. However, the lyrics, it wouldn't hurt so much if I had never met you. Sounds more like a woman, I feel. I mean... It does, because we know White Album too, right? It sounds more like Kazusa and Satsuna, but you could imagine that from Haruki's perspective. What if Haruki never met Satsuna? You know, a lot of things would have been avoided. Not saying it's her fault, but, you know, I think it could be from a male as well. The who of this song isn't really designated. So even though it uses boku, that doesn't necessarily mean it's from Haruki-kun. The idea was to make it so that it could be considered from anyone's point of view. And this was actually brought up in a separate interview as well. She had, Uehara-san had asked Naoya, the guy who wrote the song, she's like, whose perspective is this from? And he's like, it's from anyone's perspective. Like, it's not a specific person. The line, winter will come again not for us, but to lovers, hits especially hard. Oh God, it really does. Oh, I hate it. I hate it, but I love it. Jeez, I'm crow. It seems to suggest the end of love and the way you imbue it with emotion and nuance is even more superb. I am very fond of that phrase myself. Winter will come again is really an emblem of White Album too, and it's often used. The lyrics suggest something that is felt after the whole story is ended. And I think people who have made their first contact through the anime will be thinking, what do these lyrics mean? What's going to happen? And as they continue watching, the meaning will become clearer and clearer. The thing is, since I know the ending of the game, simply listening to that one phrase makes me think back over the whole story and sigh because it makes my heart hurt. <laughs> that line doesn't show up in the anime, so I'd like for people to listen to the full version of the song. Oh my god. And even people who watch the anime and think they know what's going on, huh. You do not. You have no idea what's in store for you. The amount of heartbreak. I never doubted this happiness. Never learned the meaning of the word goodbye. That was a line I could understand very well. Nobody thinks about the moment of separation while they're in love. It hits really hard. 
I think it might especially be piercing for people who had their hearts broken in winter. <laughs> That's not funny. No. It's unfortunate, though. Whenever something big like that, like a big breakup happens, you remember the season. You remember the weather. You remember the temperature. And it's heartbreaking around that time because for whatever reason, our stupid brains are like, oh, it's cold out. Remember that time? Oh, that was, that was terrible, wasn't it? Let's, let's think about it. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's winter for these three. How was the recording process? The recording was done in the presence of the director, and it went well. But up until I went in, I was very anxious. I had orders from him. My desire is to convey the lyrics, so I want you to be conscious of singing in a way that will make each word come through smoothly, even if someone isn't looking at the lyrics. I put a lot of work into that. <laughs> the feel of my voice is slightly more emotional than the other two songs, but I kept an awareness of a sense of warmth as I sang. So I hope people will notice that while they're listening. Reactions to the unexpected use of Closing 13. Listening for the exploding emotions in the hook. <laughs> exploding emotions. It sounds like really overemphasized, but it is true if you listen to the song. After Closing 13 appeared as the ending theme for episode 2, I was sure that it would continue as the ending theme for the rest of the series. But the next week, it had changed to Sayonara no Koto. In a sense, it almost felt like a special, even though it was early on. And what is interesting is that Episodes 1 and 2 were released on Blu-ray, Volume 1. Episode 3 wasn't released until the second Blu-ray volume. Obviously, if you're watching it on TV, it doesn't have the same, like, Bam. But having bought the first Blu-ray and then buying the second one, you're like, oh my god, a new ending theme? I think that's pretty special. It helps that they applied it to a really good scene. I think that for people who played the game, closing already has a strong link to Kazusa, but then in the anime, it plays in the scene when Kazusa finally speaks. I'm sure that brought a grin to the faces of the original game's fans. After the episode ran, I saw people posting about it on blogs and things, how they never imagined that this song would show up in episode 2. What are the differences from the original version? All three of the songs, not just this one, was recorded with a live rhythm section, and the strings were recorded live as well. That's the biggest difference. I also wanted to put more emotion into my singing, so I didn't hold anything back, which I think put a more genuine feeling into the chorus, revealing the true thoughts with a bang. Also, the emotion in the song builds gradually from verse to chorus, so I was told to stifle the emotion during the verses, and then to expose even more than the original in the choruses. That's another difference. I love listening to the background behind the music because then you can go back and re-listen to it and you're like, oh, I hear it. I see exactly what they were going for. It's a very fun way to listen to the music. The length of the guitar solo at the interlude was especially striking. The sound is just so cool, isn't it? But while I was singing, I had to match the strength of my attack while singing to the timing of the drums. It was more difficult than I expected. I even had the director sing it for me. Oh, I want to hear the director's version. Wouldn't it be cool if they included that as a bonus somewhere? That would be really amazing. Even as the lyrics sing about the pains of love, I will never fall in love again. I can't stand the pain of losing it they still reaffirm the strength of another feeling. I don't want to let you go. I don't want to leave you. I can't give up now. <sighs> Heart-wrenching. The lyrics in the verses show the internal conflict of not being able to be honest with yourself 
And then in the chorus, it all pours out because it can't be held back anymore. The end of the hook has a certain cuteness, softening the serious vibe that leads up to it. The last chorus, I just want to tell you I love you, even though I can't say it to your face, is especially killer. <laughs> I feel like I need to show my own tsundere side too. <laughs> Aww. Nina Uehara does not strike me as tsundere at all, but it would be cute if she tried. Can we expect any further musical surprises? With clothing with closing 13 having played at the end of episode 2. Do you suppose there ha, hmm, do you suppose it should be there are fans who are hoping for still more surprises? There's no telling what will happen until the end. I'm looking forward to it myself. There is a great work with great emphasis on the music. So beyond the theme songs, the soundtrack that appears within the show is full of great tracks. I think all of the music can be enjoyed and appreciated. AKA, you just gotta watch the anime in order to know. With the delicacies in all three tracks, when you listen all the way through, it seems like they wouldn't be out of place in an Otome game soundtrack. They're definitely delicate. I think women will have an easy time emphasizing with them. But during my shows, I've actually seen a fair number of guys crying when I sing songs from White Album 2 as well. Dude, we don't discriminate. Guys, girls, cry during White Album 2. If you don't cry during White Album 2, I think there is something wrong with you. You are emotionally stunted as a person. So to hear these songs live, sung with so much emotion at a concert, where emotions are already running high too, you got all this adrenaline going, it's not weird for guys to cry. And guys should be able to cry anyway. Just let them cry. The story and the songs match so outstandingly, and White Album 2's songs share the common ability to resonate deep in your heart, which I think is part of what makes them so popular. The Todokanai Koi 13 music video. Focus on the intense band scenes and painful emotions. There's a TV spot showing currently for Todokanai Koi 13. You look very cool singing with the band in a place that looks like a factory. That was one part of the music video being used. In the full version, in addition to the band scenes, there are scenes of me looking melancholy on a white couch in the studio, putting my hand into a bird cage and facing myself. The whole single is wrenchingly emotional, so I did my best to keep the pain in my expression from start to end. <laughs> Aww. And in one of the other interviews for Reina Uehara, they talked about how the director was saying, okay, make sure you move like this during this scene, but during this really sad lyric, we're gonna focus on the expression in your face. So don't move around a lot, just focus on your expression. They put a lot into that music video. One way of viewing it could be to see the band scenes as Setsuna singing, while the scenes of you standing alone suggest the solitary Kazusa. I see. You certainly could look at it that way. I hope the people who will watch all come up with their own ideas and enjoy it. You can see the TV spot during programs and on my official site, so please give it a watch. The picture of you on the jacket has a noble, ladylike quality, too. You think so? <laughs> I look more like I would for a concert in the full body pictures. I brought the kind of outfit I would wear while singing in White Album 2 shows to the jacket. The full body pictures are in the booklet, so you'll have to buy it to see. <laughs> the limited edition is in a sleeve format, with a picture of Setsuna and Kazusa standing back to back, depicting their relationship. And the album they're talking about specifically is the Todokanai Koi 13 album by Rena Uehara, which has these three songs from the anime. 
And they do, they have the special edition, the White Album 2 special edition, which incidentally I have done a review of if you wanna check it out on my channel. Just check out Tadokunai Koi 13 and you can see that, but it is a very beautiful jacket. White Album 2 concert and Tokyo Nagoya Osaka tour announcement. There will be a White Album 2 concert taking place on November 24th, following the release. This will be my first White Album 2 show in a concert hall, with strings and a grand piano and everything. I'm looking forward to it myself. I almost wish I could see it from the audience. <laughs> I'm already thinking about what I'm going to wear. The anime will just be reaching its climax, so I think the people who are watching will be in a more emotionally receptive state of mind, and the live instruments may make it even harder on your tear ducts. <laughs> And it's interesting because obviously now the concert has been finished. And this was the concert that was released on the Blu-ray. So I highly suggest checking out the Blu-ray. And if you want to hear more about Dana Uehara's thoughts specifically, check out my Blu-ray concert reading. I read the pamphlet, which comes in the Blu-ray. And Dana Uehara has some interesting thoughts on how the concert actually went. The good, the bad, and the wonderful. Not really bad, but I guess more different and difficult. As a matter of fact, the premium edition of White Album 2, The Other Side of Happiness, currently on sale for the PS3, includes footage from the White Album 2 live show that I did this year as a special bonus. It was a really wonderful show that stuck with me ever since, and I've never forgotten the smiles on everybody's faces during the encore. For people who were there, you can relive the excitement. Those who weren't able to attend can experience the shows for themselves in their own homes. And if you watch the video before attending the White Album 2 concert, I think you'll enjoy it even more. You're also set for a Tokyo Nagoya Osaka tour in March of next year. Dude, White Album 2 really helped Nana Oehara reach new heights. It really, really has helped her become a musician in her own right, both as a musician for games, but also as her own and releasing her own original music. This is my second time performing solo. The first time, I was just desperate to make it succeed. This time, I'm giving myself a little more room so that people can really enjoy it. And I hope everyone will get a sense of how much I've grown. I have more songs than before, and some that people will probably be hearing for the first time. So your impressions of me might change as a result of this show. I hope you'll all come out and see me. Next, the opening theme of Tears to Tiara 2, Heir of the Overlord. Reina Uehara is in so many Aqua Plus games, it is crazy. I understand you also were in charge of Many Futures, the theme song of Tears to Tiara 2, Heir of the Under Overlord, which was just released a few days ago for the PS3. I love the art for Tears to Tiara. I haven't played the game yet myself, but the art is wonderful. And of course, I've seen a lot of it just collecting the White Album 2 card games, because a lot of the card series from Aqua Plus include other Aqua Plus games. Yes, Many Futures, unlike the other tie-up songs I've sung, is a solid rock number with an up-tempo melody and very stylish. I think it's the type that will get everybody roused up when I sing it live. The game version is included on the mini soundtrack CD packaged with the limited edition of the game and Ototoi and Duango are also distributing the full version, plus many feature Futures ballad version, and the featured song Until from Hispania. So enjoy those as well. In so many different games, such a popular artist for Aqua Plus. To close, please give us a message for all your fans. This is my first single in about three years,
so thank you for waiting. For those of you who are watching the TV anime, keep watching it as it airs, listen to the single, and immerse yourself in the heart-wrenching world of the story. For those of you who haven't watched the anime yet, after you listen once, you'll want to watch. All three of the songs are very emotional, and if you listen through the whole CD, I think you'll find yourself in a very sentimental mood. It should be perfect for the upcoming autumn and winter. <laughs> yeah, if you want to heartbreak yourself. Beyond that, I have White Album 2 related events and next year's tour coming up, so please come and hear Tadokanai Koi 13 performed live. And that wonderful, uplifting ending brings us to the closing of this White Album 2 interview. So, thank you so much for joining me on this White Album 2 interview, and I'll be back reading more White Album 2 interviews in the future. So until then, hope you take care. See you!